Right, what's happening everybody? It's your boy Akeen and welcome to today's vlog. We are here in mid-July and it's time for me to start giving you my previews of all the major conferences and college football. Today, I'm going to kick things off with the most dominating, best conference in the nation, the SEC Conference. Now, over the past five seasons, the national champion has represented from this league and I think this is going to be a, the same of this upcoming season with so many great teams and two new teams joining this conference. This, now, this conference is now up to four Fourteen teams. One new team for the East team and one new team for the Western Division. Starting with the Western Division, they picked up Texas A&M out of the Big 12 Conference. Now this is going to be a bad double standard for Texas A&M, joining a tough grudge type um, conference, a tough conference in the SEC, and with a new head coach with Kevin Slumlin coming out of Houston. But he picked up a good offensive coordinator, an upcoming uh, an upcoming off offensive coordinator, and Cliff Kingsbury. Remember him? He was the quarterback for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, and he's going to be using that same spread offense for Jamil Showers, who is now the starting quarterback for the Aggies. I think he could do well for the next upcoming seasons with that spread offense and develop a good quarterback, but we will see. Anything can happen. Now, in the Eastern Division, they picked up Missouri also from the Big 12 Conference. Now, they're led by quarterback James Franklin, and I think he's an underrated dual-threat quarterback. He averages over four yards per carry, and he is a great pocket passer, in my opinion, and I think he can do well in this SEC Conference and lead this team to at least an eight-win season, and I think coming up to eight wins, that will be a successful year in their first in their first year in this league, but, but I don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be a tough year for both Missouri and Texas A&M, and I I really think if they get seven and eight wins this season, that will be a successful year. But we will see. I don't know what's going to happen. They're going to get a rude awakening joining this, this conference. They might even regret leaving the Big 12 Conference. Now, there's a couple other updating news in this conference. A couple of head coaching changes. I'm starting with Arkansas. They have a new head coach in John L. Smith. He had to replace Bobby Petrino because of the sex allegations of him messing with one of his um, employees. So he had to get booted out of the school. Also, Gus Mazan, he was the offensive coordinator for Auburn. He is now joining the Arkansas State on, on, on residency. He is the new head coach and he also brought along Michael Dyer, the leading rusher for the um, Tigers. And this is going to be a tough loss, which means Ontario McKellen is going to have to step up at the running back position for the Tigers. Also for Ole Miss, Houston not had to step down and resign, so Hugh Freeze is now the new head coach. The, now the um, Rebels only had two wins last season, so good luck to him this year. Now, I have a couple of impact players I want to talk about for this upcoming season. Starting with Arkansas, two good players. Niles Davis to start off with, the running back. Now, he was out all of last season due to it, um, a leg injury, but he will be back. And I hope that he gets back to that 2010 season that we saw a couple of years back when he rushed for over 1,300 yards. And he's going to be that key weapon in that offense, particularly for Tyler Wilson, who is another impact player in this conference. He's a great quarterback, but the bad news for the Arkansas Razorback offense is that they have to um, they have to replace three of the top four receivers um, due to um, the NFL draft. Three of the top four receivers is now joining the NFL, and Kobe Hamilton is the only returning receiver that Tyler Wilson can be more familiar with, and I think he has an opportunity to have a good year. And we're going to see how well of a quarterback Tyler Wilson is when he has to deal with new receivers, but we will see anything can happen, and I think Niles Davis needs to step up this year and get back to that 2010 season and help out Tyler Wilson. A couple of other impact players starting with LSU, Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. He was last season's defensive player of the year in college football. He was a hitting major. He made it. He was a major impact both defensively and in the special teams. And I think he's going to do the same this upcoming year. He might even get some more votes heading in um, to, for, for the Heisman Trophy watch. And I think everybody's going to keep an eye on him preseason. He will be one of the top candidates for this year's Heisman Trophy. Also, Marcus Lattimore out of, of South Carolina. He's a big time dual threat. He rushed for just over 800 yards last season because of a knee injury, but he is back. He's going to be that workhorse, and he's going to be a very key player, the the main player for that offense for South Carolina, and he will help determine if they will make it to that SEC championship and win their Eastern Division, but we will see their top team that they need to worry about is the Georgia Bulldogs, and speaking of Georgia, two players that you guys need to look at for impact players, Aaron Murray starting with the quarterback. He had over 2,800 yards passing last season with 33 touchdowns. He needs to have a big season, a sleeper, high 
Heisman Trophy sleeper type season, just like how Robert Weir from the third did had last season. I think he could do well this year. On the defensive side, Jarvis Jones. He was second in the nation as a, as that rush linebacker slash defensive end. He was second in the nation in sacks with 13 and a half, and I think he's going to make a major impact in that um, defense. Also, Bakari Rambo. He's going to be missing for the next four, um, suspended for the first four games of the season. He's a star defensive back back for the Bulldogs. He's he led the nation. He was one of the top um leaders in the nation in interception. And I think both Jones and um, um, Rambo are going to be impact players for the 2013 NFL Draft along with Tyron Matthew. Also, I need to talk about receiver Derek Rogers out of um, the Tennessee Volunteers. He had over a 1,000 yards receiving last season, second in the SEC in receiving yards and touchdowns. He's going to be that leading receiver for Tyler Bray that top target for the Vols on, on receiving court. Okay. A couple of breakout players I need to talk about this year, starting with Georgia's Isaiah Crowell. He had 847 yards receiving um, rushing last season as a true freshman, and I think he's due for a breakthrough year. Also, Sam Montgomery out of LSU. We already know how well this kid plays, but without with Michael Brockers now with the NFL, I think Sam Montgomery is going to step up and be that All-American that I know he can be, and I think he's going to be an Outland Trophy out on um, player that did you need to look for the Outland Trophy uh, Award this upcoming season for the best interior lineman. I think he could be a, a top on candidate and wreck havoc in that line of scrimmage. Going to Alabama, Eddie Lacy, he had seven yards per carry at the running back position, carrying the ball behind Trent Richardson. Now Richardson is now with the Cleveland Browns, so Eddie Lacy is going to have to step up, and I think he's going to get a great season this upcoming year. I already talked about Colby Hamilton of Arkansas. I think he's going to have the, uh, be the leading receiver this year for Tyler Wilson and be that top target, 540 yards receiving last season. I think he's due for a good year. And I mentioned Tyler Bray out of the Tennessee Volunteers. He's a great quarterback. 17 touchdowns with just 6 interceptions. Great touchdown interception ratio. But he missed a lot of games. And so, durability is going to be a major issue for um, Tyler Bray. And I think if he stays healthy, Tennessee Volunteers might be able to turn their season around and he can have a great season. Now, I have a couple of games I need to talk about. Impact games. I'm not going to mention so. There's so many big games in the SEC Conference. I'm only going to give you five key matchups to watch this year. Starting with the first game of the week on um, September 1st, Michigan's going to be traveling to Arlington, Texas at neutral site to face the Alabama Crimson Tide. This could be national championship implications. On um, September 8th, this is going to be the first SEC um, Conference play for both Missouri and Texas A&M. Missouri's going to be playing um, South Carolina, while Texas A&M is going to be playing against Florida. Actually, Missouri is going to be playing Georgia, and Texas A&M is going to be playing Florida. Their first game in SEC play, we're going to see how well, how much of a, a welcome they're going to get coming in, joining in this conference. October 20th, LSU is going to be playing Texas A&M. I think this is going to be a key game because it's going to remind me more of the Cotton Bowl we saw a couple of years back. I think this is going to be a decent defensive game. We will see. i, I got to go back to October 6th. Georgia's going to be playing against South Carolina. This game can determine the SEC East Division champion. Also, I need to talk about LSU on playing Alabama on November the 3rd. This could be implications of the SEC West Championship. I think both these teams, um, LSU and Alabama, can determine who will win the SEC West Division. And Georgia and South Carolina can win, um, the, the determine who will win the SEC East Division. And, of course, I need to talk a little bit about the rivalry week, the A Bowl, Mississippi, State, Mississippi, Mississippi. State, Alabama, Auburn, Arkansas, LSU. That's going to be a, a, a big key matchup um, for rivalry week. Obviously, I'm not going to name everyone, but all these key matches are going to be key for this upcoming season. Now, I need to go back to individual awards. I think my preseason awards, starting with the SEC Offensive Player of the Year, I'm going to actually go with Aaron Murray out of Georgia. I think he's going to have a big season, and I think he's going to do well throwing the football. Defensive Player of the Year, surprise, surprise, Tyron Matthew out of LSU, he's going to work well, both special teams and on the defensive side. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Newcomer of the Year, I'm going to go with Missouri's Dario Green Beckham. He was the number one top high school recruit last season, and he's going to be joining this team as a true freshman, and I think he's going to make a major impact right away this upcoming year. Coach of the Year, this is going to be a tough one, another tough one. I'm going to go with Les Miles of, um, Alab of LSU. I think LSU has a chance of winning that SEC championship.
Now, overall, for the SEC champion, I'm going to go with the LSU Tigers. I think with, with the addition of Zach Menenberg, the transfer out of Georgia, he's going to make a good impact, a good steady quarterback, and obviously he will get that start and I'm not. And I think what they're going to have their, all their trust and faith in this quarterback. He's a good passer, and I think with having a steady quarterback instead of switching quarterbacks that we saw last season, having a true number one quarterback, this will help out that offense, especially with Spencer Ware and Michael Ford in that backfield. I I think this is going to work well. And plus, they have Sam Montgomery back in defense and Tyron Matthews. So I'm going to have to go with LSU over Georgia for the SEC championship. I think Georgia is going to represent the East of that SEC conference. But we will see anything can happen. I cannot wait. And I really think that LSU is going to get a shot of playing for a national championship this upcoming year. Seriously, they're looking to get revenge from last season and turn things back around. Now, the next time I'm going to catch you guys is on Wednesday to give you a preview of the Pac-12 Conference. Thank you for watching today's vlog from Pro Football Exclusive. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.